Where's Brendan? Did he go to school? Oh yeah. Yeah. All I, the buses are canceled. His friends are gone. Yeah. I mean, I'm, Joanna is only in the daycare, right? So we didn't want to risk it. What? She's only in the daycare, so I mean, we didn't think she should go. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, I was talking to my sister and my dad this morning. They're like, well, it's Friday. You came home. And I'm like, he wants to go to school. Yeah, I mean, he's right here, right? He's just a fun of school. Oh, yeah. 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 So many. Yeah, plus, I, I didn't wake up early, so I didn't even think she should bother getting her ready for daycare. Good. That's Friday. It's Friday too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I knocked on the door, but once he didn't answer, I knew. I'm so well, sorry. That's fine, that's fine. Um, maybe you're done shoveling. Can I put my truck back in the Yeah, as soon as I pull my car out, you can have your truck back in there, okay? Okay. All right. Hi guys, how are you? For those who are wondering, it's been snowing since yesterday when I made that video in the morning. It's been snowing since yesterday, right? It's a lot of snow. It's a lot of snow. I hope everyone is doing fine. Yeah. for now so I'm gonna pull on my, my car and then you can have your truck back in there okay oh, yeah, gonna move yeah I'm gonna move it now okay. all right take care Whew. 
I can't I can't shovel around this place so I gotta walk in this one I gotta step guys I forgot something. I forgot to put my... <laughs> I forgot to put a shovel in a car. Because I need it. I'm going to another property to go and shovel. <laughs> yeah, I forgot a shovel. It needs to go in the car. Let me put a shovel right in there, in the back, okay? I need to put my shovel right back in there. One second. What's that? Oh. Yeah, I'm just putting the shovel right back in there. Yeah, I'm going to my other property, so. Alright guys, where's everything? Whew, it's a snowy day, 24 hours. It's been snowing for tw more than 24 hours actually, because it started on Wednesday night. It started on Wednesday night. And this is 1.30 Friday afternoon, Eastern time. We still have snow and we still have five more Five more inches or centimeters or something like that to go. So it's still gonna be snowy more. Anyway, everyone is out shoveling. Driven in the snow before. The tires are spinning. Meaning I'm having a hard time getting proper traction on the road. All right. Um, I wanna talk about uh, something today um, this morning when I woke up I was just reflecting on the different kinds of people who like to travel and I thought I should make a video on that so let me talk about the different kinds of people who like to travel to see greener pastures there are about four or five categories I'll be putting you guys okay uh, or everyone including myself when I was traveling planning to travel so let's see whether you fall in one of the categories here the first category of people who desperately want to travel are people who did not get opportunities to go to school or did not get opportunities to have um, anybody overseas to bring them um, some people just didn't get a chance to go to school because there was no support from families okay so they dropped out school dropped out right now these people are not useless they just did not get an opportunity to go to school some dropped out jss uh high school you know they wish they they they, they, they had a chance to go to school they didn't now they've grown and they've seen how life can be tough right and they are doing everything possible to travel some of them will work do a trace kind of job what we call like trace carpentry hairdressing you know trades handiwork 
right? Some of them have traveled to different countries trying to better their lives. Uh, some are in the Middle East. Some have gone to Brazil. Some have gone to other countries where it is much easier to travel to. Some have even gone to the Caribbean, Guyana. Uh, some have gone to different parts, to Trinidad and Tobago. They're just looking for opportunities. They didn't get a chance to school, but once they've grown, they've seen the importance of so many things. And then they wish somebody had supported them. They wish somebody had supported them, right? But they never had a chance. Um, these people are so desperate. They are the most desperate of all the groups, okay? They are so desperate. They're watching. They are somewhere. They feel they are so stuck. They are trapped. They want to do something with their life. They have dreams, but, but when they look, there is no help, right? They don't have the education. They don't have the money. They are just hustling and grinding and, you know, it's so hard. These people here, yeah, they are the most desperate and the most vulnerable when it comes to traveling. They can easily get uh, duped because of their desperation. Um, people can take them for granted and just, you know, defraud them, right? Just because they are so desperate. The lot of monies and savings they have, they can easily be duped. Now, some of them also have the opportunity to go to school, but they just misused it there are some whose parents or families give them the chance to go to school or give them the chance to do something with their life but they just were teenage stupid you know what i mean teenage stupid decisions uh, bad friends and then now that they've grown they want to make up for their past mistakes by working hard struggling here and there trying to push buttons here and there some have even given birth they didn't plan and now they are, they are hoping to make amends so they are looking for opportunities these two groups I described fall under category number one of the most desperate people who want to travel. Now, category number two. Category number two is made up of those who had the opportunity to go to school, either by way of sponsorship, family sponsorships like myself, or those who were able to just hustle their way to still go to school and get to the tertiary point. And then when they finish, they were so committed they were able to get a chance to finish first degree or H&D, and then they were able to make decisions from there. Now, those who were able to go to school and finish, they don't necessarily need to have families and friends overseas to travel. Some of them may not even have any connections abroad at all, just like the first group of people I described. No family connection. They don't have family members who are overseas who can help them. But because of their level of education, they can be able to break out and still travel. That was my case. I didn't have any family member overseas. I didn't know anybody overseas, but at least with my education, I was able to break through and use my education to travel. Now, these people, when they finish, they may get a first class, they may get a second class, they may even get sometimes a lower, second class lower, but they know how to take advantage of this. So they decide one of two things. Either they stay in their own Igobeta republics, or if they don't stay there, they will tend to travel. Majority of them will stay. Majority will also travel, okay? Some of them will get jobs at banks to work and some will also decide to travel. Uh, I fall in the category of those who decided to travel. Normally when they finish school, within one to five years, they would have traveled. They would have gotten the opportunity to travel. Um, either through friends who network and give them the opportunity and information and then they use that and then they just move. That was my situation. I had the advantage of education, which was able to allow me to travel when I finished school. So I decided whether I needed to stay in my country to work or I need to move, okay? Now, within um, this group, there is also the third group of people who are in the zone that I call the comfy zone. Comfy middle class or working class group. Comfy, comfy, C-O-M-F-Y, comfy, comfortable, all right? The third group of people are in the comfy middle class working class group these people have received some education uh, they did well they were they, they were the smartest in their classes okay they had first class they did so well um, in fact they were the brightest of prospects people told them they would succeed when they finished they decided to prove that they were the smartest they get jobs with some of the big big corporations mining corporations banks financial institutions private companies here and there government, civil sector, and public sector, they're doing so well. They have a decent job, they have a nice family, they did weddings, 
um, and th these people, they are, they are fairly doing okay per the standard of living in Igobeta Republic. They are doing well, right? They are doing well. They can afford a private school for their children. They have a car that they are driving. They've been able to even manage to get a car. Um, they, they probably may even be able to afford a piece of land somewhere to develop for their own future. So these people are technically not doing well. They are highly ambitious. They hope, they, they hope to, they hope to actually promote, they, they, they hope to climb up the corporate ladder. So most of them, you may have heard them, you may have seen them two, three, four, five years ago, starting as junior guys at work, and then they get promotions, right? Some of them, they are so ambitious corporate wise. They will do courses, they will do top up, they will be, they will be working all right, and then Aside from their salary, they, 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 whatever monies they make, whether it is hundred or something thousand naira or Ghanaian CDs or whatever chilling or whatever it is, right? They will. They are so ambitious. They they want to do well. They want to still succeed. People see them as successful. They wear the suit. They are the guys with the suit. The ladies who are looking, you know, so flashy in suit and all of that. They try to even climb up the corporate ladder by doing certifications. All right, they do certifications a lot. You see them working in the day and at night they are doing all kind of courses in some private universities or some public universities why they want to get promotion they want to get a better pay they want to be able to get better benefit they want to become managers they want to rise up they you know they they, they love their work if it comes to corporate setup you can say these people are some of the most dedicated corporate folks they can lay down their life sacrifice their time for their companies right they work so hard they want their managers. They are they are the loyal boys of their they are their they are the loved ones in the company. Everybody loves them because they're so hardworking. They can rely on this guy to get jobs done, projects executed. They are so committed. Now, because these people are in the comfy zone, where in their Igobeta countries, per the standard of living, they are in a level 16 or 19 in nigeria or level whatever 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 in my country ghana these people tend to be so comfortable they never consider the opportunity of traveling they don't see it. They, they go like hey man i'm doing well man <laughs> pay the standard of living here i am doing very very well you know what i mean i'm doing well i have a job i did wedding or i married i have kids they are in school uh, we can afford a vacation once in a while. Uh, we can afford to buy things. Like they, they don't. They, they, they look a little bit. I don't care in terms of. They are okay. Remember what I'm saying here. I'm not saying everybody needs to travel, but I'm saying these people are so comfy. They don't see an agency of doing anything beyond their corporate life. Do you see that? They are so comfortable. For these people, nothing convinces them about traveling. They don't, because. They are in managerial positions. They are directors. They have a team of people they are supervising. They, <laughs> guys, they have been promised promotions, promotions, right? Their managers have told them they are doing so well. They want to transfer them. They want to promote them. You know, they are getting maybe free accommodation from their company. Some of them are sleeping in company flats or apartments. So they don't have that agency of anything. Aside from trying to buy a piece of land and develop so that when they go on retirement, they can move and stay and live on it, they do not have the urgency. Aside from them doing some certification courses here and there, trying to get a better pay raise, these people, when you go to them and you try to sell them the opportunity of, hey, you can travel, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, hey, it just doesn't work. They won't see it. They are doing too, too good. They won't see it. But the standard of living, they think they are okay. They don't also see why they should be able to travel and go and start all over again. Especially when they hear people doing factory, factory jobs and stuff, you know? Like, no, it's hard for you to get them. If, if Like, it's hard. You can convince them and convince them. They are smart too. They have first class, they have second class, they have HNDs, they have two degrees, they have PhDs. It's just hard to convince them. Some of them are lecturers. You see them. They, 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 they are doing well. They are not doing too bad. Right? They are lecturers, they are young, they are women, they are raw, they are professionals, they're doing good. They are not too, they are not, they say they can, they can manage to live. They are not struggling too much. Such people, it's difficult to convince them when it comes to traveling. They just wouldn't buy it. However, in their comfy zones, there are crisis moments that can activate their desire to travel. Crisis moment. All right? For such people in group number three, right? 
the only time you can get their attention to travel is when they get into crisis. Like a serious layoff from work. They get laid off. Something happened and they just got laid off. Or they had conflicts at work with managers or supervisors or superiors and they get laid off. Or they get bypassed when it comes to promotion. They've been promised a promotion and they've been working so hard, working late, living at dawn, leaving the off, leaving home at dawn to get work. And then they close around 8 p.m., 9 p.m. to come back home. They've been promised some promotions here and there at work, transfers here and there. Such people, eh? the only thing that can get them to consider other opportunities is a crisis moment at work. Crisis moment at work. Unless something threatens their job, they never consider plan Bs. Yeah, you had me right. It's either they missed a promotion or the promotion was given to somebody else and they became so bitter about it and jilted and they feel like they were they feel so jaded right or it is either something terrible happens at work or all of a sudden they fall out with their employers that is the only time they begin looking out if these people are lecturers most of them are hoping to become senior lecturers in schools universities and polytechnics if something happened and they get bypassed and they see politics like corporate politics happening they get so angry they will just pick their laptop one day and go online countries to travel to they just want to run countries to travel they are so angry <laughs> yeah unless something happens to them they will never travel oh. hi when something goes bad at their workplace they miss an opportunity they miss something and they are not happier on the job if you are married to such a comfy zone person, if you are the one partner who wants to travel, it's difficult to convince the other partner because he doesn't, he or she does not see why you want to travel. He thinks they are doing well. He doesn't see the need to go and start. You've been praying and praying, trying to get him to see the reason why you need to go to the UK or Europe or somewhere, you know, but they don't buy it because they are doing okay. But when there is a crisis, that is when you see them beginning to pack their bag. It is not because they didn't have the money. It is not because they did not have the money to travel. They needed a crisis to sh rock their boat and make them feel like, wow, after all, I am so dispensable at my workplace. They can replace me overnight. After all, that company that I sacrificed my whole life building could just get rid of me for, for no, for, like, you know, within a second. That is when they begin to now look elsewhere. Comfy zone people. They have the first class. They can get a scholarship. They have the money. They can even travel. They can afford a bank statement. Unlike the most desperate people in category one who did not get a chance to go to school, they were dropped out or misused the opportunity of going to school. The comfy zone people, they have the money. Money no be problem. Give them most of the time. Bank statement no be problem. Applying application fee, $100 to apply is not a problem. They just don't see the need to go. For such people, it takes a serious crisis at work or in their life to rock them. For them to what? Want to think and move. Comfy zone people. You see them doing evening classes. Trying to do top-up MBAs because they want better promotions, better salaries. Yes, they love their work. They are so committed to their work. Comfy zone people. By the time I finish, you are going to let me know where, which of the zones you fall in. Are you in zone one? where you were dropped out and you feel like you didn't get a chance and because of that you couldn't do so much and you are struggling you feel like you are trapped you want to really really succeed but there is no help and you look back and you wish somebody has helped you or you are in zone number two where you were given opportunity to school but you misuse it because of bad friends were hanging around with or bad decisions and now you regret and you want to make up for it but you are not getting help you feel trapped or you are in the comfy zone. Number three. The next group of people are people who are uh, who I consider to be uh, in a zone where they have everything laid for them. They don't struggle. In fact, some of them were born with second passports. So they have an Igobeta Republic passport, which is the green ones most of the time. And then they have the red passports or the blue passports too. These people, they can travel anytime. They are normally children of people in high powers, like politicians, the crook politicians, you know. Uh, they are normally the children of big, big, big CEOs. These people go on vacations, you know. Their parents go on vacation anywhere, you know. The traveling is not a problem. Money is not a problem, right? 
Now, these people, if you are in this category and you are a parent, they can easily travel. You see them mostly going on vacation. They don't even give birth in the Igobeta Republic. They don't give birth there. They normally will wait. Anytime they are pregnant, you see them go and give birth overseas. They will move their families all over overseas. Their children don't school in the Igobeta Republics. Their children go... In fact, they themselves, they don't even go to hospitals in the but They always fly, right? They have the money. They have everything. They can actually move around anytime they want. But there is something about them that makes it difficult for them to move completely. They can move anytime. They move only on short-term basis, right? They cannot move for a long time, especially the, the parents. The reason being that their entire livelihood comes from the Igobeta Republic corruptions. Do you see that? They milk the Igobeta. They, see, they have stains going down there. Some of them are so corrupt. They, their whole life, their whole wealth comes from the Igobeta Republic. So they cannot afford to live overseas for long. So they only go and come back. They go and come back. Huh? They are always the Igobetao, even though they have passports everywhere. Huh? Because their whole milk and honey comes from the Igobeta Republics. They normally will move their children far away, family far away, go and dump them there. And then they themselves will come back because they are the main pipe to the money of the family. Then they will come and stay and then they will milk. Such people, eh? uh, they are normally the ones, anyway, they are the ones that I don't like. Especially those who fall in this category. I don't like them. Not, I don't like their person. I don't like what they do and how they get their money. Uh, they are the reasons why a lot of people down the struggle because most of them find themselves in power, right? Most of them find themselves in power. Uh, some of them may also not be corrupt. They may be legit business people um, who have genuine businesses. They are just filthily rich. They can actually travel anywhere they want because they have the money. Money is not a problem for them, right? Um, some legit businesses can be there, but majority of them make their money through dishonest ways, right? And these people secure passports all over the world for their families. They move every member of their family. They create a second plan for them. Just in case something goes wrong in Igobeta, you see them quickly. Just move everybody out, right? Yeah, vacations, they are overseas. They, you see somebody give birth, they don't give birth in their Igobeta Republic. They always will go and go and give birth somewhere. Do you see that? Do you see that? So some social social media people or some celebrities who fall in this category and they have money also do this. You see a lot of musicians, you see a lot of celebrities, especially those who are well-to-do and fall in this category. You don't see them giving birth down there in the Igobeta Republic, right? So anytime their partners are pregnant, within four months of pregnancy, you see them get their visa and then boom, they are gone. They are gone for about six, seven months. The moment they give birth and get that passport for the child there, then they'll come back. They are locking the future of the children somewhere else, right? Uh -huh. And then they'll come back and still make their money from their shows, right? Because their fan base is here. They are going to come back and play shows here and make all their money. And then when they finish, they know where they put them. All right. Um, these are all the categories of people who like to travel. Where do you find yourself? Which of the categories do you find yourself? Among all the categories I described, the most vulnerable and the most desperate are the first two categories. Those who were school dropouts, couldn't get a chance to continue, or those who misuse opportunities. They were given the chance to school. They were given the chance, even if they, <clears throat> even if they did not want to go to school and they wanted to do maybe a trace, like a business or something like that, or learn handiwork, their parents or their families tried to support them, but they just misused them by either making bad decisions or hanging around with bad friends or bad companies. And then in the end, they are now grown up 20 years, 20 something. And then at that point, their support systems have all been withdrawn because they misuse them. And then they begin to regret. Now, some of them in their regret, they don't stay in their regret. They wake up from their regret and they try to do something from themselves. Um, so they try to push buttons here and there. They try to start a business. They try to do this. At a point, you see them going through Libya. At a point, you see them going somewhere trying to go to Italy. At a point, you see them trying to go to Middle East. You know, they just want, you see them trying to go to Brazil. They didn't get a chance or some of them just misuse the chance and they have grown and then they are just having some regret or they wish somebody had helped them and they want to do. Now, this category of people, yeah? They are the ones that when they get a chance, they can make the most out of it. They are not lazy, especially those who did not have the chance or those who made mistakes and they are trying to make up for it. Because they have learned their lesson eh, of misuse opportunities or missed opportunities and they have been given a second chance or 
those who never had the opportunity but now they've grown and they see the importance of maybe education or having a trade or handy job and stuff like that right they tend to be more serious in life they tend to be very very serious all they need is a little bit of help here and there some of them try and push the button they try everything remember i told you they are the most vulnerable people can easily dupe them because you see desperation makes them so they, they don't they, they may even just pay money to connect them and all their monies are gone right they are the most vulnerable if you hang around with such people they need a lot of emotional support they may even experience some form of inferior inferiority complex meaning that they may feel that they are not so important in society they may look down upon themselves they may come across very depressed they you know they may easily be pushed into writing themselves off but remember we say these people are the ones with the most 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 possibility of succeeding because because they've seen the other side of life and they've learned from it especially when when they get a chance if you give them the chance to go to germany right now within a short time you see them doing containers huh within a short time you see them doing containers cars everything sending them back home eh? doing bail force you know clothing sending them back home you know why because they now look back and they look at all the missed opportunities they are like never again never again even though i had an education and I fall in another category of those who took advantage of education and I was still poor. Because of what I have tasted, my poverty, it drives me. The poverty has become my inspiration, right? That is why I work, I work, I work the way I work. Because I have seen it, so I don't want to go through it again and I don't want my children there, right? Um, which category do you find yourself? Which category do you find yourself? Are you in category one of desperate people, missed opportunities or desperate people who didn't have the support or are you in a category of those who made use of the opportunity finished your education and took advantage of it and you traveled or you decided to stay to grow and succeed or you are in the comfy zone category where nothing seems to move you you are so dedicated to your work you are the lawyer or the poster boy of your company you are the most dedicated staff they give you all the accolades here and there you know sharp sharp person and you feel like your soul is even tied to the company, you know, and nothing moves you. You, you. you are doing fine until there's something rocks your boat and then you begin looking for ways to travel. Or you are in that upper echelon of people who have everything on silver spoon and they don't have a problem. They, they, they even carry second passport. They go on vacation outside. They don't, when, when they complain about it, go better, they sit back and they laugh at you because <laughs> money don't be problem give them, right? For them, <laughs> they've seen everything right from infancy, right? They are the children of the big, big men or the parents of the, <laughs> which one, where do you find yourself? Guys, whilst I lay down this afternoon and I looked at the kinds of inquiries that were coming to me, God was just putting this in my mind for me to just analyze all of them right i reviewed my emails and messages i get and i was just looking at the desperation of many people and god was just giving me the wisdom to just put them together in categories i hope this made some sense all right um my advice to everybody in this category if you find yourself in this category uh, especially the most desperate group that i or category i talked about my advice is that remember we said you guys have the most potential to succeed when you get the least chance some of you are not even looking for hundred thousand dollar jobs you are only looking for maybe nine dollars five dollars ten dollars and you still succeed right some of you all you say is that all i need is that that visa in a factory job that's all i need now if you find yourself in this category my advice for you is never to give hope ne never to give up don't give up there is always a breakthrough for every group okay uh I suggest you surround yourself with people who are moving in life faster than you are and are more smarter than you are. In other words, check the kind of people you surround yourself with, all right? At your home, at your workplace, you know, make sure you are spending your energy and your pressure time with people who can move you forward. Now, for you people, your relationships can tend to move you faster, your connections to life, right? In other words, even though you are down there in that most desperate, if you are hanging around with the right people, who are ahead of you in other categories they can easily help you to move forward some of them can be blessed or can be touched by god and they can even just pick you up and sponsor you and take you overseas there are people like that there are people like that there is a popular pastor from ghana let me mention uh he lives in the uk he lives in the uk he's a pastor he even brings some musicians to his church does somebody know his name 
he was hustling. He was a hustler. Somebody just came and saw him and picked him, took him to the UK. Uh, his name is not clicking. His name is not clicking. It's a very noble man. He's even helped some of the celebrities come to his church in the UK. He has a church in the UK. He's a Ghanaian pastor. He himself, he sings. He sings when he's doing his ministration. Does anybody know his name? Does anybody know this guy's name? His name is just not clicking. Uh, he has a church. He has a church in the UK. From Ghana. He's from Ghana. What is his name? That guy, his story is one of the most desperate group people. Right? He never had a chance to go to school. There was no support. But he was spending time. Abem, Ab, Abam, Abiam, Abiam Ministries. Abiam, thank you, thank you. Atefua Mafu Abed. His name is Abiam Ministry. See that guy. Go and check him out. Right? He didn't have the education. He didn't have anything, no support, no family support, nothing. But because he was able to improve his relationships by hanging around with people from other categories that can pour some blessing on him, somebody just touched him and lifted him up. If you are watching me today and you find yourself in the most desperate group, all you need is a divine appointment and connection. You heard me right, divine appointment. This is where you need to draw closer to God. Hmm? Change your circle of friends. Change your circle of friends. Sonny Badu. Uh, no, no. Uh, it's Abiyam, Abiyam Ministries. You can check him on YouTube. Uh, change your circle of friends, guys. The same people in the, the desperate group may not be able to help you. You want to change and move to groups where people are doing well. They are more smarter than you in terms of maybe education credentials. They are more educated. They are more connected. Just use your humility and, and be so authentic. Somebody may just hold your hand and say, you know what? I'm taking you to Europe. Somebody may just hold your hand and sponsor all your papers for you and just break through for you. Dan so Abiyam, that's the name. Dominic Sasu. Right? So that is my advice for you. Even though it looks like you are trapped, huh? be humble. You cannot, you, look, you cannot stay in category one and be prideful. Oh. You heard me right. If you stay in that category and you are full of pride, eh, it's so difficult for people to connect with you because your pride drives them away. So if you stay in category one, you need to be the most humble person Humble doesn't mean be a slave to somebody. It simply means your heart needs to be so authentic and be so genuine and be to make the effort, pray and pray and tell God, especially if you believe in God, that he should make divine appointments for you. He will send a helper your way. You will realize today you are sleeping in a trap zone before you realize somebody has just moved you like that all over the world. It could, it happens. Some of them, they don't even have, all they do is they go on social media and somebody sees them. Angelina Jolie can see you. Beyonce can just see you. Beyonce, some celebrity can just see you and just pick you like this. Somebody could be touched. Steve Harvey could be touched and just see you and just pick you like this. Right? So, if you really stay connected to God and make the effort to improve your relationship, you cannot stay in the desperate zone and then all your friends are also so desperate. That desperation will lead you to make a lot of silly mistakes, including sometimes trafficking drugs, prostitution, Mm -hmm. and all kinds of illicit businesses and you end up frustrating yourself the more and then you miss all your opportunities i hope this helps you i hope this helps you if you are also living in a comfy zone um i believe it's all about timing do not move if you don't want to move i believe everybody's time is different right some of you you need to just go through that phase where your boats get rocked and you feel like wow at all i thought i was <laughs> i was going to spend my whole life here and retire right and you know <laughs> Right? When you go through those moments as well, when you travel, you tend to be more serious too. Because you've, you've worked with a bank for several years as a manager, as a director, and all of a sudden your life took a downturn. When you get that second chance, you tend to take it more serious. All right? So uh, that's what I would say. Don't force it. Don't travel if you don't have to. Stay in your countries. But when the opportunity comes through your crisis moment, be quick in realizing and sitting back and repurposing your life. Reinvent yourself, reorganize yourself, re-strategize and see whether you need to stay or you need to move. Remember, God moves people. He moves people across the world. So if it is your time to travel, he will definitely make a way. If it is not your time to travel, he will also make a way. Some of us, we just need to go through our crisis moment and then we can be able to do that. All right. All right. That is me, Chaco Melonia. If you are in the category of uh, Ide Beta every day, in <laughs> those who are in that final category, they, I don't want to call them Ide Beta every day inside ego better republic for them every day they better they don't even see the stress of the people because every day they better give them they are they are the ones who enjoy a lot if you are living there i have nothing to say to you especially if you are a legit business person uh, working hard for your money you enjoy it enjoy your money 
But if you're making your money through a dishonest way, your time will come. Your time will come. Judgment will be upon you. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Chaka Millionaire coming your way with the category of the most desperate people who want to travel. Um, whilst I was shoveling and then I was driving around too. I hope this helps you. Um, oh, my goodness. Maybe I should create category number six too, right? Category number six are the people who have retired. They, they have retired. They have finished. They are 50-something, 60. They are looking back in life with so much regret, wishing they were, if wishing they could turn their hands, the, 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 the hands of time, wishing they can go back. They are 50-something, they are 60-something. Now, they are at the point where they don't have the energy to work. They don't have the opportunities like they, they used to, and they look back and they ask themselves, wow, I wish I could be 20 years again. I wish I could have my youthful age back. I wish I could do this. Now, some of them at this stage, they go through a lot of depression because they are in retirement and things did not go as they thought they will. Um, if they also get a chance, they will. They will. Some of them may even have divorced or their partners may have died. They are single, they are alone, they have kids, they have responsibilities. And then they look at all the stress. Now, sad people, they need a lot of support. If you live around people like this, please extend your hand and give them some emotional support and material support or any kind of help they need us because they tend to be the people who go through a lot of challenges. At this time, their vibrancy is gone. They are not as active as they used to be. And they have a lot of regrets most of the time. They wish they could do things differently. Some of them are so ashamed, they can't even tell their own children they wish they did things better. They, they don't tell people about it. They bottle it within them. And they have a lot of depression. They walk around. They look at the fact that they don't even have a plot of land, a piece of land where they can actually build. They are renting. They are being told to move or they are being evicted. And they are living on a mega pension. And, you know, life is hard for them. And then when, when they walk around and they see all the opportunities of the 21st century for the youth, they regret such people, when they get a chance, they will also travel. Some of them don't even look at their age. They will say, you know what? Give me anything. I'll do it. Right? Especially if the health is there. Such people are the ones that I really feel we need to support. The desperate people and the last group, group six, we need to support them a lot. Remember, depression is so real. Kevin Hart did a joke. And uh, in that joke, he said, white people get depressed about almost everything. Black people don't get depressed. To a large extent, is right. White people can get stressed about the little thing, right? The tiny, tiny things white people get so they, they they get into depression for basic things, simple things. Black people hardly go into depression because of how rugged our systems are and how much poverty and stress we've already gone through. The system has already grilled that depression out of most of us, right? So you can bring all kind of tsunamis to us, we we'll still survive it, <laughs> right? But the truth is that there are also some categories of people who experience a lot of depression. They are the desperate group in category one and the group six of people who are aging, looking back on life and looking at what they wish they had done when they were younger. These people are the ones we need to support. Unfortunately, in Igobeta republics, we don't have support system for such people. We don't even have counseling centers that are approved by the government for them. They are on their own. Some of them may commit suicide at the slightest opportunity. Some of them may, you know, they, they go through a lot of stress. So if you live around elderly people and you are young, don't look down upon them. Your words might just send them early to the grave. Offer them help. Offer them emotional support. Be their friend. Encourage them. Okay? Um, if you were in their shoes, you will know what they are going through. If you live around people, like, be careful with your words. Don't use your words to kill them faster. Words, the power of the tongue can kill people faster. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section which, uh, which category you are in, in the Igobeta Republic, wherever you are. Okay? When we say Igobeta Republic, we simply are referring to countries within Africa where leadership had failed so much to the point that the people become so hopeless about their leadership and all they do is to put everything on god trusting that god will intervene they spiritualize every problem especially the ones that their leaders can even handle they when you ask them they will tell you ah uh if you ask them you say hi hi you go be one day or if you ask them they will say hi 
they be the dear befa or they will say fama nyame you see him omeshika omeshika you understand me my, my guys in east africa i greet all of you kenya i greet all of you habari yako i hope you guys understand omeshika hmm? all right um um this if go better republics we put everything on god including the ones we can handle we tend to spiritualize artificial problems right they we don't take responsibility for the things we are supposed to do starting from our leadership we, we never take responsibility we spiritualize everything everything is spiritualized uh, religion tends to be misused a lot uh, in this part of the world right religion tends to be misused a lot that is what we mean by ego beta republic which ego beta republic are you in and which category do you think you find yourself please don't be ashamed Remember, it is true some of our interactions that I get some of my things to come and share. I hope this is helpful. And I hope you got one or two nuggets here in order to take advantage. Uh, if you find yourself in a desperate group, remember, improve your relationship. I don't care how poor or how much missed opportunities or regrets you have. Make the effort. When you go on Facebook, right, go to your Facebook contacts. Delete every contact that does not make you move forward. I did that. I did that myself. I used to have over 5,000 friends on Facebook. Now I have less than 200 friends. I, you heard me right. I had to sit back and ask myself, the kinds of friends I have, where are they taking me? Are they friends who are improving your life like the way I talk to you every day? If not, go and un unfriend all of them. You don't hate them, eh? At the right time, you're going to go back to them. You see that? You got to start changing your relationship. You got to start making some new friends. You got to start hanging around with some more people with fire, more people with smartness, more people who know systems and they can move you around. Their blessing will just touch you and then will elevate you fast like that. You cannot be stuck and be surrounded by people who are so stuck too. All of you are grounded. Who is going to get up? He who lies. Who, who, he who lies down fears no fall, right? You're hanging around with the same desperate people. Nothing changes. Change your friend. I don't care whether you're educated, whether you're a GSS lever. Start making the effort to connect with people. Man, one day, eh, dress up in suit. Go for a conference. Go and sit there. Whether you speak English or not, go and sit there. Shake somebody's hand, man. Don't downplay yourself. Don't look down on yourself. If you're complex, is the key thing that happens your progress here. Because you look down on yourself. You say you don't have, you can't speak English. You are not educated. You are a farmer's child. You are this. No, 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 no. Don't look down on yourself. Right? Start believing in yourself. And remember, until you believe in yourself, nobody will believe in you. Did you hear that? Quote me. Until you start believing in yourself, nobody will believe in yourself. The number one thing you need here to improve your relationship is to start believing in yourself. Believe in yourself. When you believe in yourself, it activates all kinds of miracles and strength from within. The Bible said, for the, because of their unbelief, he could not perform miracles. Because of their unbelief, the lack of belief, Jesus Christ in Nazareth could not perform miracles. Not because Jesus doesn't have the power to perform miracles in their lives. But their unbelief was a serious blockade. Blockade. You know blockade? It was a barrier blocking the miracle from happening. The number one thing you need is that belief. Believe in your... What, what is the belief in yourself? I did not get education. I am a dropout. I come from the poorest of families. But I was not created stupid. I am no mistake. I am no mistake. I am the most beautiful thing God created. There will be none like me. There will be none like me. Even if I die and I go, there will be none like me. Start believing in yourself and start rising up. When you speak this language to yourself, yeah, it happens, guys. I knew I was born into poverty, but I refused to accept that I was poor. Right from level 100, University of Ghana. That was when I got that consciousness. Listen carefully to me. I knew I was born into poverty. You heard me right. But the consciousness, the awareness of me to be, to know that I was born into poor poverty, eh, started when I got to University of Ghana. When I started seeing the different class of people and the different kind of lifestyle and I saw where I fell. That was when I realized that, wow, I did really, really poor. Inside Choco, I didn't see it though. When I was at Choco, I didn't see it. Because everybody in Choco was poor. You heard me right. When I was inside Choco, I didn't even realize I was poor. Because the person to my left, the person to my right, the person up, everywhere, we are all poor, so it's normal. It was only when I went to University of Ghana and I saw the different class of people who came for lectures. Those who had BMWs and those of us who were working, working with slippers. That was when I started seeing the different classes of people. And that was where the consciousness of poverty came on me. It was as if somebody just woke me up and said, hey man, watch it. Can you see the reality of your poverty? Can you see the classes? Some people are so different. On vacation, they go on vacation in the UK. 
we on vacation do you know what we do whilst my, our friends our classmates were going on vacation on uk Schengen visa us to go and do summer work travel holiday work eh? we me 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 when i was in legon on vacation i was busily contacting the jcr president who is the leader or the president of the student hostel that i was in Komowato, asking him if he can extend the room for me to stay during holidays because i didn't even want to go home man home was so depressed i wanted to still stay on campus during vacation i wanted to stay on campus during vacation because i didn't have nowhere to go to home was not an option man i would rather prefer to stay on campus on vacation than to go home and be another homeless <laughs> those of you who know me you know mostly on vacations i was staying on campus there are so many people you see on campuses on vacation huh they are going through a lot of inferiority complex and depression because they have nowhere to go to. On vacation, you'll notice they're always around, eh? They have nowhere to go to. Yeah. They have nowhere to go to. Start believing in yourself. I started speaking the language of I will be. I will be. Right from Lagon. That was when it started. I remember when I was dating. If anybody knows me and knew me when I was dating before I got married. Eh? Ask anybody who dated me. Eh? I dated before I got married though. I used to tell my girlfriends at that time, as anybody who has ever dated me, I used to tell them, I will be a millionaire. Some of them didn't believe me. I said, I will be a millionaire. They look at me and they say, hey, this guy. <laughs> but I just felt that thing inside me. I said, I will be a... I didn't know how, but that was the language I was speaking. I told them, the day I'll bring my wife on, you are going to hear her tell you that. When I met her, I told her, I'll be a millionaire. I didn't know how, but that was how I felt inside. <laughs> It starts with a belief. It starts with a belief. It starts with a belief. Guys, I don't care which category you are in, but if you don't rewire that software and start speaking some words into yourself that you were not a mistake, you're going to feel so trapped and so trapped. And you, you, your life will be more depressing than anything. The state of your mind determines what you attract. Proverbs 17, 23. Go and check it out. The disposition of your mind can even make you sick. Sometimes the way our mind and our unbelief is so big, makes us so sick every day, so depressed every day. All right, guys, thanks for watching Chaka Millionaire. Share this video to bless someone. All right, and remember, uh, if you want more content on my personal real estate investing and how to increase your uh, wealth and all of that, get more personal with me. Consider subscribing. There is a subscription button on my page. Consider hitting that is just six dollars a month. I will get more intimate with you and walk you through how I do some things I do personally, things that I may not be able to share um, just because of the length of my videos, right? Um, consider subscribing and then let's get more personal and let's help ourselves out. This what we guys, we are not against each other. Apart from the corrupt people who are against us, apart from our common enemy, the failed leaders out leaderships out there, right? Politically, we are bound together, the same destiny, the same desire to succeed. That is what connects us together. Like this. God bless you and thanks for watching. This is Chaco Melonier. I am an S poor man living in a country where it is better every day. I once lived in a country where it go better. Now it is better every day. God bless you and thanks for watching. Thank you for considering sharing this video to create a vibrancy, to create that consciousness, to create that movement of people who are becoming aware of their situations than anything. Let's begin to count our blessings and name them one by one. Let's begin to focus less on our problems and let's focus on what we can do and what is within us. There is greatness within you. God bless you and thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.